this whole lesson has been a process and hopefully it will answer the question how do I quilt this so here by this time I think I may have filled your head so full of different designs that you could use I may have confused you so let me fix that I've put together this row by row choosing your toppings menu just for you and what it is is a workbook with all the designs for all the different segments of this ice cream plate. And all you have to do is cut them out, place them where you think you might like them, and voila, you have your go-to plan. And this is something that you can put above your machine as you're stitching to follow. I've printed out my booklet for choosing the toppings and I chose toppings that I thought I might like and I've cut them out and I'm going to use my, as you can see they're kind of all over the place, so I'm going to use these repositionable dots and, and place it down on those and see if I like this layout or if I want to change it to something else. So I'm just going to put this there, so it's not going anywhere. Put this down here. It's sort of like working a puzzle. Now in the middle, I've decided I'm going to go with the orange peel without the stitched lines. So let's go ahead and put those down. in place and I kind of like these swirls so let's put those down and you really only have to put maybe just three one for each end and one in the middle to hold it in place let's get it where we want it Glue that down. Now let's get this one where we want it. That works. Now I chose to use the straight lines that are the matchstick quilting because I have so many curves going on. I have the curves here and the curves here and I have curves here. I need something to um, take away all the curves. So I thought maybe they would work to calm down the curviness a little bit. So let's get the dots on those. So you can see how this goes together. Once you decide which designs you want to use, then those are the ones you want to practice before you start putting it on your row too. But you have a lot to choose from, 
but once you break it down into the designs you actually want, it's not as overwhelming. So, I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking, hmm, curves, 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 curves. Those are the only straight lines. Maybe I'm going to take these up, and this is what's nice about using the repositionable dots. What if I instead put these down because they've got a bit of a straight line to them. That might balance it off a little bit. So you can just sit and play and play and play as much as your heart's content to get the designs that you want for your block. And there you go, you're ready to go. You know which blocks you're going to work with, which designs you're going to work with. And you didn't have to lift the pencil to draw. This is the basic template that you're getting this month. Pretty bare. And I'm showing you where the boundary lines are so you can get a feel for that. Once you have your fabric and batting and backing all pinned together, then it's time to start to quilt. The first thing we want to do is quilt that center area that includes the plate handles and the ice cream slab. So starting on the left hand side, do a continual line of stitching until you get to the right hand as indicated in the red. Once you have reached the right hand side, continue on and stitch back to the left in the same manner. You have now anchored down the center part of your design and all the center pins can be removed. It's now time to stitch the arcs. So you can start in the red, where it's labeled number one, then move on to number two in the blue, and finish up with one complete circle for number three. Make sure you start the stitching for number three on the left-hand corner of your ice cream square in the middle. That will put you right in place to continue on your stitching in the arc. So let's get on with some stitching already. You know by now that I always suggest using every tool in the toolbox. Now this is something you do not need to have in order to stitch these large circles, but I'm going to show you what I used and it made the job a lot easier. This is a half circle template set from Handy Quilter. And you can see there's different sizes. Now I'm going to use the largest size because it just so happens, and this was strictly by accident, that these half circles pretty much are the same size as these templates. They're not exact, but I can make them work just by inching them around as I go. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to tie off, and you want to do this slowly, there's no rush. And if you see that your circle's getting slightly off, just readjust the template. Remove the pins as you come to it, or you won't get an accurate job either. But this is a, a great way to get around these circles smoothly. Like I said, it's nothing you have to have. It's just, I want to show you what I'm using. 
and how I'm using it. So now I get down to the end of that arc. Now needless to say the one on the inside and I'm going to stitch down to the inside arc is going to be smaller but again I'll just keep moving this ruler until it fits into play. I gave you the advice as far as stitching order because that's not what I did and you can see I've got all these pins to work around so it should be easier for you. And maybe I can get a tighter angle on the ruler work so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to put the ruler down and I'm going to position it so that it's a quarter of an inch away from these dots and you can see where it goes off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch part way like that and then I'm going to adjust the ruler as I go to get the arc lined up and as it starts to go off again I'll start to readjust the ruler once again but this gives me a smoother edge to work with. This on a curve that's much smaller. Now could I have used one of the smaller Yes, I could, but you could see that it still doesn't fit exactly. So you have to kind of fudge it around a little bit. But whatever works, like I said, whatever works for you, works for me. Well, look what I discovered. Here's the, the smaller curved ruler from Accidents and Design that I, I have also. And I, I wanted to dis, dis, discover whether or not it would work on the curves also. And it does. And let me show you how it works. So let me stitch up this straight line here. And I can actu actually use the edge of the ruler to do that if I want a straight line. Okay. Now... The reason I like Accents and Designs rulers so much is because you can use them on this side or on this side and it gives you the same arc. So I'm going to leave it on this side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm making that arc a quarter of an inch away from the dots and I'm going to start stitching. inside of the arc. Now you see how it's going out of the way there? Well that just means that I need to adjust the ruler to fit the curve. So I'm going to come over here, got it adjusted, and I'll keep going. Now when I get over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to adjust that curve so it's a quarter of an inch away from these dotted lines. So sometimes you might feel forced to go out and buy another ruler, but you don't need to. Now as far as the handy quilter ruler that I showed you, it also works very well for Baptist fans and things like that, which of course you couldn't do with, with this ruler, but if you would only buy it just because of this class 
and you already have this curved ruler. I think it's a six and a half inch curved ruler. Or whatever curved ruler that you have, you may be able to adjust it to fit. So it's it's hard for me to try to get an angle on this so that you can see it. So let me turn it a little bit more. Yeah, that should work. This time I'll keep the angle on the out, outer edge of the ruler before I was working on the inner edge. And as soon as I get to the point that I think I'm going to start going off of the lines, I'll adjust the ruler. actually just as easy if not easier to use even though it's not even close to the right size it's because the arc the curve on the ruler matches the curve on this arc so well okay so that worked out beautifully just thought you'd like to know. Now, the rulers that you're ordering, if or you may already have, for the row three, you can see where there's much more of an arc on the one that I just used. Find something darker to put that down against so that you can see. So there's the arc of that one. And if I put it down next to this one, you can see that this one doesn't have quite as much of a curve to it at the top as this one. So this one you might have to fudge with a little bit, but I'm sure you could get it to work as well. If you notice on my finished quilt, I have a quarter of an inch echo around the circles. By placing your ruler, no matter which one you're using, right on the previous stitching line and stitching again, you will get that perfect quarter inch echo. Notice how I've run my tablecloth fill beyond the boundary lines. That's so that you'll be filled clear up to the edge when we trim it. The design that I have chosen has been named Scallop Clamshell, and it was introduced to me by Cindy Seitz Crook. She's an expert at doing grid designs, and I, I really recommend if you like doing grid designs, this is great for background fillers and things like that. She has a book called The Grid Design Workbook where she shows you how to do all the designs. So this is just another suggestion, another tool in the toolbox. Before I forget, I just wanted to give you a little caution on the scalloped clamshells. It is a one-way design, so make sure that you do each one exactly the same. So in other words, if you're stitching on the left-hand side of the line, stay on the left-hand side for each one. If you're stitching on the bottom of the line, stay on the bottom for each one. Otherwise, it will not look as good as you want it to. Ask me how I know. Well, folks, as Porky Pig says, that's all, folks. This is how you take a plain design made up of a square, some circles, and a diamond, and turn it into a beautiful row of gorgeous stitching. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Make sure you share.